Skinwalker Thread Post Stories, Encounters, Mythology, Lore, etc. I will launch this thread with a story of my own. It's a long one so fair warning. Was going to do green text but decided I didn't want to crash half of 4chan servers. After I'm done with my story I will respond to questions, add details where asked, and plan to participate in this thread until it dies slash I get bored slash go to bed. This happened a little over 10 years ago but I've never told anyone because it was just so weird. I started lurking 4chan a few months ago, mostly R9K and Bat, but started on slash X and slash K a few weeks ago, both boards where I discovered that talk slash belief, if often half ironic, of skinwalkers and the sort is fairly commonplace. So what better place to share my story with the world right? So this all begins in a tiny town in Oregon close enough to the coast that on a windy enough day you could smell the ocean. Up north was the Columbia River, then Washington. But in between us and that is the Clatsop State Forest, which is pretty big. There's me, Anon, a kid who I considered my best friend who well call Jake, and Sam, the astral badass. Me and Jake were pretty average losers, but we need to talk about Sam. Sam was everything you'd look for in a friend. He was basically a genius who could answer pretty much any question you had about science. He wanted to go to school to become an engineer if I recall correctly. He was also the type of guy you would go to for advice about relationships and day-to-day -day problems, and he always seemed to give good advice. But on top of all that, he wasn't an asshole about any of it. If you asked him anything about astronomy or whatever he would always answer in a way that didn't make you feel like a retard, and even if it did, and you told him as much, he would look you right in the eye and say very seriously, that you were much smarter than you thought you were. At this point Sam was 21 to 22, Jake was 16 to 17 and I was 17 or 18. Sam always had a sort of libertarian view so when Jake and I wanted beer or smokes, Sam would buy them for us, but never enough for us to go to crazy. For example, if we wanted to go camping, which was all the time, and wanted booze or smokes, which was all the time, Sam would only buy one pack of smokes for all three of us, or a couple six packs and give Jake and I two or three and keep the rest for himself, though he was never a heavy smoker or drinker. He told me that he didn't like to lose too much control of himself like what would happen if you got super drunk. Anyways one day I'm working at my job at the local scrapyard after school when someone brings in a rusty old dirt bike for us to take apart. As I'm helping scrap it the guy tells me you don't need a license for dirt bikes if you're just driving off road in the mountains, which sounds pretty fucking sweet to me, especially since I don't have a car, and neither does Jake. Later I get home and call Jake, this was a time before cell phones were anywhere near as common as they are now, though they did exist, mostly as flip phones, and we both decide we want dirt bikes to fuck around in the woods with. I keep an eye out on the classifieds for a while until I find one that's in okay condition and am able to talk the guy selling it down enough to where I can actually buy it. Jake had just a few days before convinced his dad to sell him as that hadn't seen the light of day for years, if not decades. As was common practice, we phoned up Sam and told him we were going to spend the night in the woods, as well as all about our new dirt bikes. He says it sound fun and that he could borrow his dad's ATV, so maybe we could drive around looking for stuff we haven't seen yet. So we pick a trail and follow it for a while, until it gets almost too dark to see, maybe a half hour later. This deep down the trail there aren't any proper camping spots, but making one of our own is easy enough, so we do just that. It's a pretty nice summer night, late June early July, I think, so we leave our tents, which are tarps we would just drape over any given tree branch and weigh down with rocks, in their bags and decide to sleep under the stars. But it's deep as fuck in the forest, we're three kids, and we have beer, even if it's not enough to get shit faced, so we know automatically the sleep will come much, much later. Sam is sitting on a log roasting as many Vienna sausages as he can fit on a stick and Jake and I are bitching about school. Fairly standard affair. Soon enough it's pretty dark out, and Sam starts talking about the constellations, the significance they may have once had to Native Americans, and a bit about astro-navigations. 
also fairly standard affair. After a while we lapse into a rare silence and just appreciate the night sky. Like, this shit is fucking gorgeous. Without really meaning to, we've gone far enough away from town that there's next to no light pollution. Then, Sam speaks up, Ya yeah, no, I've never been in this part of the forest. Let's go explore some, see if maybe we can find some old Native American ruins or something. Yeah, why not? This is pretty much the character dynamic between the three of us. Jake and I drag Sam along to some dumb shit, but later when our two toddler attention spans are at a loss of what to do next, he takes control and stares the night from then on. We grab our flashlights and start going through the trees until we see a gigantic boulder sticking out of the moss and ferns, which I promptly climb upon, with Jake laughing. From atop my rock I see Sam looking at some of the moss on a nearby tree. He starts talking about the difference between moss and lichen, and about how lichen can be thousands of years old, when out from the dark a smell comes. It comes so subtly that I think it's just me at first, but then I see Jake make a face, and Sam trails off. It's really hard to describe just what it was, but if I had to use one word, it would be, horrifying. Think rancid beef, curdled milk, roadkill, stagnant water, sour milk and an oddly sharp, metallic smell and you might get the idea. It's so fucking weird that I don't know what to say, and by now it's gotten pretty bad. Suddenly Sam speaks up, let's go back to camp but it's not in his usual sort of playful tone, it's dead serious. Neither Jake nor I have ever heard him talk like that, and it honestly freaks us both out on the way back, Sam leading the way, starts talking about the human brain and how its job isn't really to give us the best possible representation of reality, but more just to give us a version that makes some sort of sense. Knowing what I've told you about Sam, this might not sound too odd, and usually, it wouldn't be, but he's still using that serious tone, even though I can tell he's trying to sound less serious, and unlike the lichen and the stars, this is coming out of absolutely nowhere. Like when he's talking about nerdy shit it's always connected to something. He's also talking pretty quietly, quiet enough that I have to strain to make out what he's saying. When we encounter things that the brains don't know how to process, it'll try its best to fill in the blanks with something. Coherent. That's why, when you're in a really dark room and you focus on the darkness for a while, you start to see shapes that aren't really there, or why you see faces in piles of laundry, that kind of stuff. Jake asks him why he's bringing this all up. Sam stops, way too abruptly, as turns. It smell? That wasn't something solid or physical. It wasn't just a dead animal or someone's poorly buried turds. We were picking up on something. Bad. Our minds were just trying to give us something to make sense of. And for whatever reason, it used our olfactory senses, our noses, to give us that information. I was stupid. That didn't sound like something real, but like I said, Sam was smart, and the way he put it made sense. Thankfully the old campfire is coming into view, by now just some coals. In that moment I wanted nothing more than for Sam, who was approaching what was left of the fire, to pour some fucking lighter fluid on it or something. I look to my left and see Jake looking at the forest behind us and sweeping his light left and right. I look back to Sam in time to see him pull some revolver out of his belt that I didn't know he had from my commandos it looked like a cold detective or something, with kind of a shorter barrel. Sam starts fiddling with the cylinder and I think he's just checking to see if it's loaded at first, but watch as he pulls the rounds out, one by one, and lays dips the tip in the ashes. I want to ask him what the fuck he's doing but by now I don't want to disturb him. It's hard to explain why I was so freaked out, but Sam was always a relaxed and confident guy, even if a bit awkward, and he was never scared of anything. Anything that would have worried most of us, Sam could explain, pick apart, analyze, so that it made sense, and we definitely wasn't worried about someone finding out he was buying beers and smokes for us. But here he was, the most serious it ever seen him, in tone, in movement, in everything, dipping fucking bullets into ashes. It made no sense, and with every passing moment, everything felt less and less concrete, and more and more surreal. Jake nudged me out of nowhere and I jumped. 
he apologizes and says you smell that shit? Holy fucking shit. PNG. The smell is fucking back. I want to fucking throw up but don't to bow over and make myself vulnerable. I turn to look at Sam and see his face in what's left of the campfire. It's almost scarier than the smell. After he's done, Sam slowly, methodologically, places the rounds back into their cylinder, one by one. Then, he pulls a hip flask out of his back pocket and dumps what must have been some pretty serious vodka or something onto the fire. With a huge whoosh it explodes back to life. That's when I see it. My mouth goes dry, my stomach drops, I lose seemingly all my strength as I see, not 20 feet into the woods, to Sam's left, this figure. It's the general shape of a person, but something just wasn't right. It was taller than it should have been, with a longer face, hands, fingers, etc. than it should have had. Its eye sockets were huge, deep, and dark, and its actual eyes were just as big, wet, with tiny, pinpoint pupils of a color I can't even describe. What was most fucked up about it though was that even in the light of a newly revived campfire, it still seemed shrouded in darkness. It's wearing clothes, but they're worn, tattered, and dirty. I didn't see much else because in that moment, I saw the barrel of Sam's revolver fade into my peripheral vision, and in an instant the world became bright light and high-pitched ringing. After Sam takes his first shot I am pretty disoriented, and don't see if he hit it, but I'm guessing that he did because I hear the shriek, like sick, mutated animal that's being put through a wood chipper, then the telltale sounds of something rushing through the ferns. Just as I'm regaining my senses, my ears are again raped by another shot, then another. A bit later, the ringing in my ears fades away and I can see, Jake is sitting down in a fetal position, crying softly, rocking back and forth and Sam has the most intense fucking look I've ever seen on anyone, until then or since, like a father trying to protect his kids. I feel a warmth in my pants and look down to see that I pissed my pants. No one says anything. We just sit in the dark, surrounded on all sides by this hostile shadow. I want nothing more than to get the fuck out of there, but also don't want to move. We don't sleep that night, and when the day breaks, we all wordlessly pack up. Even in the light of the sun, I don't want to start my bike, because I feel like it would be too loud. No one said anything on the way back, we just went. After that we stopped hanging out. Not because we didn't like each other anymore or anything like that, but whenever we saw each other we just remembered that night. Jake was no longer that cool kid that was fun to be around and that made dumb jokes, whenever I saw his face I remember seeing it twisted, wet was not in tears, and Sam wasn't that laid back, smart guy he used to be. Whenever I saw him I just remembered that look he was giving the thing, this intensity that made him seem so much more dangerous. And of course, I'm sure I wasn't who I used to be anymore either, and was now the idiot who stood around and did nothing and pissed his pants. Naturally this event had my curious and a few internet searches later I came across a website dedicated to cryptids that doesn't exist anymore where I learned that what we had and encountered was almost definitely a skinwalker of some kind. I still talk with Sam on the phone, sometimes, it's easier that way, and every time I do I want to ask him about that night, but never have the courage to. I think we're okay, now, but I just can't camp anymore. Day hiking is fine but I will never be caught dead in the forest a night again.